define our own identity in everything that we do. So when you see something that resonates with you, you're like, that's who I am, that's what I stand for. And the chairman's like, here's this guy. He was like really off with like, and I was there just going, trying to be professional, like, hey. But it's counterintuitive. When you lean into who you are, you naturally create filters, filters to let positive things through and to keep negative things out. What would you say to somebody who's maybe struggling a little bit with kind of, you know, putting their brand out there in a really authentic way that actually, you know, that if they did that, it would really accelerate their, their business growth. I think there are a bunch of social norms that are good for us. For example, if you go to church, you shouldn't be yelling. You shouldn't come in with t-shirt and flip flops and shorts. It's a place of reverence and a worship for a lot of people. And I think that makes a lot of sense. If you go to some cultures, they have rules like in Japan, they ask you not to eat on the, on the subway and they ask you not to use your cell phone because they want to respect the individual right for each person to kind of be in their own space and i think that's pretty cool and i think that's fine i'm not talking about those kinds of things that we need to buck against but unless there is a rule or a mandate that makes sense to you especially if you have the freedom to do whatever it is that you want that you start to explore and express that here's what i think about a lot when you go into a store there's a bunch of competing products from shampoo detergents to rice to cereal there's a bunch of competing products that for the most part are almost all the same if you break down the ingredients but they command different literally presents on the shelf some of them are eye line and those are the most premium spots the ones that are high and low they're not really for adults and so it's kind of interesting, like who commands that space? What catches your eye as you're going down the aisleway? And especially if you go into a very curated supermarket where they don't just let any product or, or brand enter their store and something's going to speak to you. Maybe it's the language, the color, the name of it, like liquid death might be like, oh, what is that? And then you're drawn to it mostly because of the packaging. And we can understand that some bottles of water look more tempting than others. Some command a premium, some brands of alcohol say, like, this is worth $10, the other one's only worth $3. And what we're looking for is to define our own identity in everything that we do. So when you see something that resonates with you, you're like, that's who I am, that's what I stand for. Makes sense, right? This also works with people. So when you're out there looking like, uh, like let's say a Gap ad where you're wearing a buttoned up white shirt, Oxford shirt with khakis, you're kind of vanilla. Like, I don't know what you stand for. I don't know if I'm attracted to your values, your beliefs. But the minute you wear a rock concert t-shirt, all of a sudden, it's like, I hate that band or I love that band. When did you go and what's your favorite song? So you're inviting people into your world and it feels the most natural way to have a connection with someone. So I want people to try to be a little bit more intentional with their beliefs, their values and how they package themselves in the world because by decision or indecision, we're communicating something to others. We're really safe, we're boring, we're really exciting, we're dangerous, we're rebellious or we're very empathetic. All those things are kind of being invisibly communicated to others. I'm curious, Robin, from your perspective, what has been your experience with, with the concepts I'm sharing? Yeah, I, so, I mean, straight away, when I first started my coaching practice um, after selling the agency, I, I went for the the button-down shirt, The I dressed how I thought people would expect a coach to dress. And, you know, I, I ended up working with a law firm. This is, um, I obviously not going to name and shame them, but I remember going into this law firm, starting on my coaching journey as a 160-person law firm, and they had a really high staff turnover rate. I'm in there with my, you know, smart shirt on and my chinos and my nice, you know, shiny leather shoes. But I, I still had my coaching method, my coaching was still like the fearless version of my coaching, but it was now dressed up in this, this shirt, like constricted. So, and I remember the way that they treated me was quite interesting. So we did a couple of quite left field things in that organization. One of them, for example, was about, because it was an open plan office, the partners were complaining because they kept on getting interrupted. You know that? Oh, if you could just got five minutes and that was happening to them like 20, 30 times a day. So what, what we, what I invited them to do, I was like, you need to come up with something so that other people on your team know when you're busy, when you're doing your deep work. And what they came up with this, they said they would put a tennis ball on their desk. I got called up to the chairman's office that when I came back to do the review. And by the way, the team, we did a pilot program. There were 12 teams in that company. And my team was the only team in this law firm that most of their team took holiday in the 11th month of the financial year, which is unheard of in law because everybody is normally making up billable hours. And they called me into the board meetings, like a fully blown board meeting and at this point I was back in my t-shirt and jeans because I realized that that's where I was most comfortable I felt really uncomfortable first time I was in there I'm in this board meeting t-shirt and jeans and the chairman's like who's this guy now what's this whole 
little tennis ball thing about it. he was like really off with like and, and i was there just going trying to be professional like hey look i don't think this is the time or place to discuss this like let's have a john let's have a meeting afterwards you know and let's debrief so that we can actually talk about this professionally he tore me to, to shreds and you know but it was that comment of who's this guy with the t-shirt and jeans that was like that I was like right these aren't my people i need to go and find my people who mm. get like t-shirt and jeans business coaching you know the fearless way and the whole the way the brand came about for example is because my back I, what i love in my spare time is surfing surfing and cycling put me in the water or going down a hill really fast love it and i've noticed that all of my clients since i introduced the fearless brand about two years after that incident all of my clients have this really cool edge to them so they're all you know they'll go off wild camping on like dartmoor for example which is this completely sparse place out in the middle of nowhere in wales they, they do uh, i've got a couple of clients who do ultra marathons and things like that so that embracing that brand is like and that identity is was massively important to like the transition my revenue when i went for my fearless t-shirts and my I, I like to wear dc like trainers when i went to that brand my revenue doubled so it's kind of interesting the thing that we worry about in our professional experience is showing up the way other people want us to show up thinking that that's the ticket to our success and ultimately our happiness but it's counterintuitive when you lean into who you are, you naturally create filters, filters to let positive things through and to keep negative things out. So clearly this person who, who ripped you to shreds for your attire, couldn't look past that, was a person that you would probably be pretty miserable working with because the whole time you're like, hey, how about we try this? Like, no, I don't wanna do that. I wanna do this other thing. And that's not of interest to you. So this is kind of the balance. So I, I feel like this, the more you show up as yourself, the happier you're going to be because we don't have to pretend the less you have to remember about what it is that you're supposed to be doing. But I think what happens is when people are at ease with who they are, it's a very attractive combination that people are just drawn to. Like, wow, what is it about you that seems so at peace, so grounded this moment? Because I want a little piece of that. And they'll, they'll just gather around you just to be hopefully soaking in through like via osmosis, some of the energy that you're putting out.